Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Foundation plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I just wanted to discuss a little bit uh, about the new uh, subtract uh, function or feature that's been added to the Foundation plugin. Um, just to let you guys know this uh, feature is also available in the wall and the trust plugin and is essentially the same concept and the same uh, way of using it. So uh, just, you know, if, if you can use it in one, then you can use it in all the rest. But let's go ahead and open up the global settings first. And I just wanted to point out that if you want to use subtractive geometry, uh, you can turn it off or on globally here. And so we are going to be using it and I've already actually have it turned on. So just make sure that this is turned on first, or at least uh, if you want to use it, because if it's not turned on, uh, you're going to find that uh, you know your subtractive geometry isn't actually subtracting anything and you'll start wondering why that's not working. So uh, first things first, just make sure you turn it on in the global settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw ourselves a slab on grade. And we're just going to focus on a slab on grade today. Uh, you can also you know use this feature with stem walls and slabs. So I'm just drawing a grid here, lay something out, and then I'm going to use our slab on grade tool right here and just draw a very basic polygon shape slab on grade to start with. So let's go ahead and throw some points down, just like a little L shape one maybe. <clears throat> That's fine. And, and you know you could probably go faster if you use the polygon uh, uh, feature but this works for our intents and purposes so go ahead and do that and then I'm just going to change the rebar here to and I usually don't use the mesh when I'm doing uh, these tutorials uh, simply because when you use the mesh you know you're drawing a lot more geometry and so it just it will go a little slower and I, I want things to be fairly snappy right now so okay so there's our um, <clears throat> simple um, slab on grade and Let's go ahead and just demonstrate uh, punching a hole, for instance, through this thing. So let's just so we can kind of see what we, we're dealing with here. Um, let's change that concrete to a little bit transparent so we can kind of see what we've got. And you can see we've got some rebar in there. Um, so we're going to punch a hole right through somewhere in here. Doesn't really matter. But to start with the hole, what we want to do is we just want to create the geometry um, you know, that we're going to be punching that hole with. So let's go ahead and then just like, let's say, a 4-inch radius on that. And then make this, just draw a little push, pull that out. And let's group that. And <clears throat> so first of all, we want to create solid groups, right? If they're not solid, what we're essentially doing is using Boolean subtraction. So if we want to subtract something from this foundation concrete or the rebar, we need something that's going to be solid so it can actually perform the Boolean subtraction. So make sure that that solid you create is solid. And then I also have installed uh, this handy little uh, plugin. It's called the... Uh, solid inspector plugin. Everybody should actually have this guy and I like to use it. I just cl click on the solid and do that and it says no errors and the reason why I use it is number one it does check to see if it's a solid but also it checks to see if you've got any reverse faces. So I like to make sure we don't have any re reverse faces because that can actually cause reverse faces on the object that you subtract from. So just as a way to prevent that. Uh, just keep keep tabs on your solids and make sure they're nice and clean. Okay, so <clears throat> um, first of all, let's move this guy down so it will actually cut through that. So let's just push it down, say 12 inches. Let's see, that should get us through. Okay. And then the other thing I like to do, like with my subtraction geometry, is, you know, <clears throat> you don't actually delete it after you use it. You keep it in your model. Um, so I like to just create a separate little layer here if you like call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it subtract. And the, and the name of this layer, it doesn't matter. Um, it, 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 you know, you can call it what you like. 
and you don't actually don't even have to do this if you don't want to but I like to put on a separate layer and you'll see why very quickly enough so and then I'm going to just use this label um, color uh, just to color that and then I'm going to change that to transparent so I can kind of see uh, you know how it's cutting through Again, this step I'm doing is really not necessary either. It's just for visual uh, purposes that I'm doing this. So, <clears throat> okay, so we've got this solid. Right now, it's outside of the assembly, right? Here's the assembly. Here's our solid. Okay, for this to actually cut, uh, be used as a subtract feature within the assembly, we need to place it within the main assembly or the main group. <clears throat> so, what I typically like to do is just um, select it, hit cut, click into the group of the foundation assembly, and just do a paste in place. Okay, so now, as you can see, it's within the group. And you can see also that if I click on this group, it's, uh, it should be in there, I think. Let me see if oh, I didn't actually click on the group. <clears throat> right, so it is. Okay. And for some reason, I accidentally changed this. Did I? Uh, maybe not. Okay. <clears throat> so, so that's basically it. Um, oh, well, one last thing. The instance name has to contain the keyword subtract. Now, it can be all caps. It can be whatever. Uh, the word subtract can be before or after. So I'm just going to put a pipe, uh, let's see, one underscore subtract. If you don't put the keyword subtract, it's it does not know that this group is going to, it wants to be subtracted from the rest of the geometry in the assembly. And also when it does do the subtraction, it retains this geometry as well, so it doesn't remove it. Uh, otherwise it would remove it when, it when you regen or edit this uh, body. Okay, so that should uh, take care of us. Again, um, make sure you have the keyword subtract in the instance name for the group, the solid group, and then make sure the group itself is within uh, the actual assembly. And then uh, I don't have a regen function right now on the uh, slab on grade foundation, but if you take and edit this guy, and if I hit update, we should see, as we do below, that um, we now have a hole in this uh, concrete. So that's what the purpose of this whole idea is. Now, I can turn off the subtract uh, layer or tag, and that way we don't have to see that. We just see the hole that's left. So, so basically, I'm just hiding uh, the original geometry that's used to create the subtraction. And the nice thing is, is that geometry, you know, <coughs> it's parametrically uh, persistent. So even though I may edit this foundation, that geometry is still within the group and it stays there. So for instance then let's say I um, let's say I, I decide you know down the road I'm like well wait a second I need to move this over uh, a couple feet right <clears throat> for whatever reason you know changes like this always happen so you're like well we got a hole there now now what do we do okay well we just go edit the foundation and we update it and there you go so now the hole has regened and it's now in the new spot. Okay, so that is one example of uh, using the subtraction feature. And I'm going to do one more example just because uh, I had an interesting question recently with this. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like what, what they call a, a mortar uh, key, keyway, along the perimeter of this uh, slab on grade foundation. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go ahead and start by creating a just following the perimeter of this guy fairly accurately as I can and there's more than one way to do this I'm just I'm just gonna just do it <laughs> I don't know if there's a better way uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and just hide the main thing uh, hide the main assembly right now just to get that out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so there's our perimeter. Um, let's go ahead and delete that. I don't need that. So I'm just going to start anywhere along this line here, and I'm going to create my little keyway. 
based on the, this location. So I'm going to come in, say, six inches. Again, I'm not really, you know, spending uh, too worried about, you know, the dimensions or anything. It's just uh, I just want to demonstrate this this concept really. Um, let's say 1.5, and let's say 1.5. And oh, you're going to see why I'm doing these 1.5s. Um, let's go 1.5 again. I just want to get a diagonal, really. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do here. So I'm just. I don't. Know, I'm just. I'm just trying to create a, a little. Um, let's see here. Oh, let's get. Go ahead and get rid of that guy. Now, of course, we've got multiple edges. No, nope, our edges went away. Okay, it's all single edge. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and create a face there. So let's just put our, one of these edges back, and that'll generate our face. Okay, so there you go. So we've got ourselves a little profile that we can use. And, you know, you could use some other extension or something like Profile Builder or something to create some sort of profile that we're going to use to create the uh, three-dimensional uh, motor key. <coughs> but, um, yeah, just just quickly knocked it out with uh, the you know just the basic tools so how do we do this well we use this typical uh, follow me tool here uh, actually let's see I'm gonna select that first how does this work it's been a while since I've used it no it's select the profile first that's right select the uh, the path sorry so I got the path selected and then I'm gonna click this guy and then I'm gonna go ahead and click this guy and there we go. And there's our little profile, right? Uh, it's generated, created a little 3D mortar key that goes all the way around. I'm just going to grab this guy and delete it. I don't need it anymore. You could keep it. I mean, you know, it's up to you. And then I'm going to triple click on that guy and make it a group. Just make sure it's a good solid. Click my solid inspector. Yep, everything looks good. So again, I'm just going to color it this red color. I'm going to pop it onto the foundation subtract layer. And I'm going to name it Mortar uh, Key Subtract. Again, the name doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the fact that you have the keyword subtract somewhere in that instance name. Okay? And that's pretty much that. Okay, so I'm trying to go slow enough that I don't forget any key steps here <laughs> and fast enough so that uh, you know I don't get boring because some of my videos do get a bit long-winded okay so I think we're good to go let's go ahead and unhide all and now we can see this guy looks like it's intersecting this uh, foundation about right I'm gonna actually turn these foundation bolts off because I don't really need those <clears throat> so the last step I need to do is take this guy, click cut, double click into the group or the assembly and paste in place. Alrighty, and now we have that ready to go. And now we should be able to get some magic here. Let's go ahead and edit this assembly. And we are going to turn off those uh, anchor bolts right there and just hit update and there you go okay and let's turn off our subtract layer or tag and let's change back our concrete to a non uh, uh, opacity here just so we can see what we really have and we've got ourselves a motor key Let's just go ahead and hide that too. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> and then again, the, the, the nice thing with this uh, subtract feature is, um, you know, that subtract geometry remains within the uh, model, within the assembly. And if you decide to parametrically, you know, change things up, maybe this uh, footing goes deeper or it's wider or whatever or you can even change the outline uh, of course if you do that you're gonna have to want to change uh, you're gonna probably have to redo your motor key 
but um, but you know barring that I mean you know you can parametrically update this slab on grade foundation at any time and this uh, subtraction of that motor key and hole and whatever else you decide to add in or, or subtract out will remain within your model so you don't have to uh, you know manually edit this thing over and over again so that's kind of the benefit of this this whole feature so anyways um, I think fairly simple to use again it's the same feature whether it's the wall plugin the truss plugin or the foundation plugin you have the subtract feature available to you um, I think it's I think it's fairly easy to use and it so far has been reasonably robust in most cases so um, you know if there's any questions or problems with it please let me know but again thank you for watching and as always thank you for your support thank you